Hello everyone, uh, we'll start in four minutes. So 7.05, we'll start inshallah. Okay, good afternoon everybody. Good evening for the people who are in the our region time. Uh, we are glad again to have Dr. Omid. And today he will continue explaining about the EGS in RC. Hello uh, everybody. So hello. Hello everyone. Uh, so uh, today we're going to continue. Okay, please, uh, because there is a, an echo. So if you have your mic, uh, please close it. Okay. So last time we uh, we went through those X Y Z again. Is 
this uh, okay top of my uh, okay screen okay so we went through those xyz last time and then we went briefly on introduction on uh, beam package and uh, beam is uh, something i think a lot of you are interested in where you can build uh, linear accelerator models and uh, you can use that to study for example effects uh, let's say from the, the design or the materials or you just get an output of uh, beam coming out from that model and you use that beam uh, to further uh, do calculation in a phantom of interest. Okay, so before I start, are there any questions? They are asking you to speak louder, but I think the, the sound is clear. I think everybody could hear it well. Is it, is it clear? Yeah, I hear you very well. Okay, so are there any questions? I've sent uh, uh, the uh, classroom uh, group uh, an example of a linear accelerator. I think it's an 18 MV, where you probably need, uh, I sent you three files. One is the, uh, what's called a uh, spec module file. That basically, I'm going to show you the file actually, and you'll be surprised. Uh, so the file will, you will always have your Linux accelerators that, that has the component modules. Uh, they will be, so if you go to your home area, there is a directory called beam NRC, and in it, there is only one folder, the spec modules is called. And this is actually, this is, these are actually the accelerators. It's a model of the accelerator. The file is basically a very sh short text file that lists the component modules in a given accelerator. So let's open, uh, let's look at the, the file I sent you. Okay, uh, so we'll open it with Emacs, sorry. Okay, so the file basically has this, uh, or this linear accelerator has uh, these uh, component modules that I have went through last time. So the first one is called the sla slabs, cons 3R, slabs, flat fill, slabs, mirror jaws, and slabs. These are the, the titles of the uh, spec module, uh, the modules as given by the, you know, the beam NRC manual. Now on the bottom, these are identifiers. So slab, I just identified it as a target. This is a primary collimator. This this is text could be could mean anything. Uh, so here, this these are the component module names that are related to to the given accelerator. Okay, you can build it. You can basically go to your GUI and open the spec modules uh, uh, or open the accelerator uh, from there, and you will immediately find. Uh, so let's go there. File will load the previous accelerator. And uh, this is the Linux I sent you. So, uh, no, okay, I think this is the file. Oh, no, this is the other one. Okay. So these are the, the component modules as listed in the accelerator. So slabs, cons, uh, 3R, slabs, whatever. Okay. Now, when you build the file, when you compile and build the accelerator, it will actually, just make the, the more trunk code for that accelerator. It will go and grab the physics uh, subroutines. It's going to grab the geometry subroutines that are related to these uh, component modules and then compile the accelerator. So when you do that, if you go back to your home area, once you, you build the accelerator and compile it, there will be a directory that begins with this capital letter B, capital word B. And in it, this is the Linux EX uh, folder. So CD, okay. So if I list, this is, this is, this is actually the folder for the Linux and there it has, this is the Mortran file uh, for the accelerator. 
generator and so on. Now, the next step, of course, we went through is once you have your accelerator, you need to start to build an input file. And you also probably need to have your PEX file, PEX4 file ready for the materials. So you cannot just randomly, uh, uh, like, or if you want, you can design your own accelerator, but you have to, before, before you start to actually put the geometries and everything, try to make the PEX data file. So if you think you're going to have lead in, in somewhere, okay, you need to actually create that fixed uh, data file or, or uh, with all the materials that you, you're going to need. Once you have that, then you can select from here, just the, where you select the fixed data file. Uh, by the way, I got an email from someone that you cannot run a simulation and the error was based to the PEX file. I think you cannot have a space in the name of your PEX file. So he had it called water space phantom. Uh, that is not good. So you can put an underscore between the word water. It has to be, you cannot use space. And I think that's the error, that, uh, that's the source of the error. So this is the PEX data file. Okay, we're gonna use it. And now you can start to actually uh, define the geometry and the materials of, of the slab. The main input parameter, this window, uh, this is the title, for example, example, uh, Lina, okay? And here, the X uh, NRC parameter, this is where we control the physics, okay? That's the first thing I always try to do just to make sure that I have exact, rest, uh, the rest is fine if we're doing MV, uh, so I keep the defaults, or sometimes I intentionally actually like to use the, the, you know, the better physics. So really scattering, uh, scattering, I would turn it on if it's off and so on. Then this is where we select uh, uh, the source. So for a linear accelerator, the source uh, uh, is going to be, uh, you know, electrons hitting a target. So that's why it's going to hit the first component module which we call the uh, target. People who are doing cobalt, for example, they can use this for this source number three. It's a uniform isotropically radiating internal source. So in that case, suppose we're doing cobalt, you would go and select, okay, I have a photon beam and I'm gonna select three. And uh, then you have to define the radius. Uh, uh, you know, you, have, you can look at the help and, and see, for example, how you, you would make your source, how, does it, how is it going to look like? And uh, then of course, uh, the beam, you can put 1.25, or if you want, you can select the spectrum. And uh, I think uh, in the generic, uh, I think we can then go and select the cobalt uh, 60 spectrum, okay? This is just an example. Okay, of course, this is a number of histories. Uh, I'm going to come back to this page because here is when we're going to start to define uh, what we call a phase space time. That's very important. That's one of the, the important outputs that we get from beam simulation. It's called the phase space time. So then we will go into each of these component modules where we start to define, for example, uh, vital radius, you know, the layers, the number of slabs. Okay, let me open the one that I have sent you. So we're gonna open, uh, it's here. Okay, this is the one. Okay. So here, this is a slab, it's just a, a three slabs of different materials. I think the first one is tungsten, and then we have a copper, and then vacuum, okay? Uh, we need to put vacuum somehow in the LINAC just uh, because it's actually vacuum in some parts there. But what I'm, I'm interested to show you or talk to you about is this thing. 
okay? Two additional, okay, we're gonna put this at zero. Okay, the first thing, the first, you will find this in every region in your needle accelerator. So you will have what's called a dose zone. So for example, if you want in the simulation to actually record the dose received in that region, then you will give it a scoring zone. So for example, we could call this five. So I know, for example, in the output, when I want to look at the dose, the dose are not going to be given to you as, okay, this is the target. It will be given as a function of this, the dose zone, whatever integer you're going to give it. So in a piece of paper outside, I would record, okay, five is, for example, the dose received in this tungsten layer. Then when we run the simulation, we look at the output and we see the dose region five, that is, then we know that this is the dose in this region. Okay, you can have multiple regions with the same uh, uh, dose zone because you just add them. So for example, if I want the dose in the full target, then I would put like this. Vacuum, of course, there is no dose is going to be scored, but we can put it, but you, there is no dose there. So now the dose is scored uh, in the output when region five, the dose there is actually, it's not the sum, but the dose in both regions because the sum we have to take the mass into account, okay? Uh, uh, so it's not just a numerical sum, but it's actually it takes the energy divided by the total mass. That's how it is. Uh, now, of course, probably this is not an interesting region where we actually want to score the dose, but it's possible. We can put five here and so on. Now, the latch, I'm going to come back to it. Okay, so this is the first, the, because I got a question in the group. Okay, what's the output? Uh, someone plotted the plot that five. Uh, there was like regions and there was a dose. So what was that big plot? I think in the output, I, I forgot to actually remove these dose zones, but basically that's the output. So if you go, for example, I think there is 13, you will find, okay, a dose there. Somewhere in this linear accelerator, there is a region that is identified as dose zone, dose zone 13. I don't know where, it's, where is that. So you have to look into the input file and see where is that, okay? Clear so far, or or uh, okay. So now we understand what this dose zone means. This is something you have to record on a piece of paper when you do your geometry of a linear accelerator. We say dose uh, uh, zone seven is this region. Those so five, you can use any number. Zero means don't score those. But but uh, for the rest, probably we want to maybe this is would be an interesting uh, in the lead, in the monitoring chamber. Okay, I have here. I have a very simple monitoring chamber. It's not actually a monitoring chamber, but basically a slab because I I'm just interested in the attenuation of the beam as it passes through the monitoring chamber. But suppose we actually managed to, we did really a very nice design of monitoring chamber. Then we want to, for example, score the dose in, 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 in air, for example, in one region. Then I would know, go and see, okay, which region is that? Then this is going to be, for example, five. Then in the output, when I look at the doses, region five, I know which, which region corresponds in, in my, my region accelerator. okay? So you can have regions uh, five, seven, you can, it just needs to be an integer, okay? Okay. So this is the first output. We want actually a dose to be scored in a certain region in a linear accelerator. This is not an interesting output, except for the monitoring chamber, but no one would really want to know what's the dose delivered in your jobs, for example, or in MLC, okay? That's not of interest. The second important or nice uh, uh, output that we would like to get is what we call a phase space file. Okay, and that is set from here, number of scoring frames. So the idea is that let's look at the linear accelerator. Okay, this is the linear accelerator. We have the first, this, these three are the first component module. 
then we have, I think this is the second component module. Then we have the exit window is the third component module here. Then the fourth is the flattening filter. Then here we have the fifth is the monitoring chamber. And then we have a mirror somewhere here. That's the sixth. And then we have the jaws. And then we have the eighth. This uh, uh, is the, basically the, the, uh, the air slab, uh, air, and as well as the exit window from the near accelerator. Okay, so we have eight component modules. Now, a face face file is basically a file that contains or records the particle that reaches a certain plane. For example, if I would like to know the particles that have reached this region here, this is component module going to be, uh, this is the slabs. So this will be one, two, three, four, five. Then when we go and set in the output, I want number of scoring planes. I want one, this, I'm gonna put this to be five. So basically score the particle that reach that plane just below the, the component module number five. If you want to, you can actually have uh, up to three uh, scoring planes in a simulation, one, two, three, but uh, the, the probably the most important one or the most the one that is of interest to us is probably going to be whatever is going to reach this thing. Okay, sometimes some people they will actually take it up to 70 centimeters just so that if they want to do an SAD calculation, you know, then they can do that. But if we're doing an SSD calculation or 100 centimeter SSD, then probably you will take the simulation, especially this is important when. At the beginning, you, you want to optimize your linear accelerator. Optimization means that they will have a model, but how good that model represents or matches the actual beam uh, in your clinic. So what you do is you do the simulations and then take the face space file and use it as an input, let's say in a dose XYZ calculation. And from the dose XYZ calculation, you will get your PDDs, you get the profiles, you, you see how well uh, these uh, uh, simulated data match your measurements. If, for example, your PDDs are a bit higher than measurements, then you would go back and tweak the, the linear accelerator. You would use, for example, a 17.8, for example, uh, MEV rather than 18. If your penumbras are not good, uh, quite bad, then maybe you, you will adjust a little bit your dimensions of, of the source. So this is what we call about optimization or, or, or get, generating your beam model. Uh, so probably at the first stage, you would like to actually generate a phase phase at, a, at, a, at 100, and, and, uh, and that would be a component, the eighth component module. Now, to be frank with you, the zone type, I really don't know what it means. I just put whatever, because I, this is, has to do something with the analysis of phase space files, and I'm, I really don't, I don't understand it well. So I usually just put squares, square, and I put this zero, so it will automatically do it for me, the zone. But you will see, this is not of interest of what I want to do, because I want to take phase space file and, 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 and do a simulation in the phantom. So this is irrelevant for me. Okay, so now when we do this simulation, let's run a simulation. Let's do, okay, 10,000. And let's say the input file, let's run it. ECAT, PCAT is just a, two parameters to stop the sim, to, to stop tracking the particle. Leave it as zero, don't put anything. That's my advice. And everything will be taken from your text data. The latch, we're coming back to it. That's... So if I go and look into the file, in, into the this file, then uh, let's uh, ls uh, minus ma eighteen. Okay, 
if you look at the, this is the file that has, this is the, uh, the space phase, the space phase file. This file is going to grow with simulation. So you see now the size here, now the size is actually grown a bit. It just, there are more particles that has reached that file. Okay. I'm waiting for the simulation to finish. Okay, it's 800 Ks. Usually the, the face space files I use are about 1.5 gigs in size. So, uh, they, they contain about 40 million particles. Okay, so now the job has finished. Now, of course, this face space file is just something you cannot read, it's a binary file. So how do we want, if you want to know what's inside that file, what to do? There is an application, it's called BeamDP. So BeamDP, okay? Luckily, there is a GUI for it. That's actually, there should be a shortcut in your, your, your uh, desktop. So if you click on it, this is BeamDP uh, uh, GUI, okay? So let's look at, let's look, list the parameters. So we go and say, okay, list parameters for the number of phase space five particles, okay? So we'll start by particle one, fine. Okay, let's put all, I want all particles and let's browse and go and select the phase space five. And we execute. So now it's going to open the file and oh, we'll list only, I think the first 100 uh, only. It does not go, uh, otherwise this is going to be just huge. So it gives you some information. Okay, we have, for example, in this phase space file, we have 37,061 particles. Out of this number of particles, there are 36,792 particles that are photons. And the rest are obviously either electrons or positrons in this case. Okay, this is the maximum kinetic energy of the particle, of particles, 17.9 MeV. Remember the, uh, the, uh, for the instant electron energy was 18. And this is the minimum kinetic energy of electrons that have reached uh, uh, the phase space uh, uh, plane. Now, <clears throat> this is very important, very interesting. Okay, now we start to list start to list, I think, the parameters for the first 100 particles, I think 100, okay. So the first thing is the energy. So it looked at the first part, part in the file, this is the energy of that file. Zero, it means it's a photon, it has no charge, okay. And this is the, the uh, position of the particle. It's at minus 1.6 A and at minus one point, uh, in the X direction and Y in the minus 1.5 in the y direction, okay? Remember, all these particles, the z coordinate for them is going to be 100 because they have reached that thing. Now, uh, u, v, and w, these are the cosines of its momentum, okay? So that's the direction. That defines the direction of the particle. Weight is the statistical weight of the particle. Uh, you, I'm going to show you something about just to explain about the weight, but this statistical weight uh, of the particle, one, two, three. So it's, I think, here. This is the, the statistical weight of the particle. Now, the latch is uh, uh, something, these are, you can think of them as flags. Okay? So, we, for example, a certain particle went inside the region, okay? We want to actually flag it. We want to say, okay, I want to flag that particle that has passed, for example, through the job or interacted in the job. Then I want to say, okay, I want that particle to have a flag because at the end, when I want to analyze the phase space file, for example, I can ask, okay, which are the, 
list the particles that only interacted in the job, for example. Then I would go and, okay, see which particles are, have, have that flag. And this is what we call latching. Okay, I think there are 16 bits uh, for a particle. So these are switches, imagine zero or one. So when we do the simulation, we can go and say, okay, I want, if a particle interacts in the positive X jaw, for example, I want the latch number nine, I want you to latch that. So you give it one, okay? If it's interacted in a certain region, I can go and latch another bit, okay? It doesn't make sense to, to latch the same bit for completely two different regions. So you would say, okay, bit number 12, please latch it uh, uh, in that region. Now at the end, we can then go and, for example, if I'm calculating the dose, uh, I can, for example, decompose the dose to see, okay, the, what's the dose deposited from particle that have a latch of nine on? You can do that. And this is why it's very powerful, okay? Uh, there is another thing you can do here is, I think plot, where is plot? Uh, what's this data? Yeah, so here, oops, sorry. This is also, I'd like to do this at the beginning just to see my geometry is okay. I have, I think the beam, the, the field opening was a 10 by 10. So let's put all, I'll put minus uh, 30 up to 30, minus 30 up to 30. So basically what I'm doing here, I'm telling the system, look, go and grab all the fire, all the particles in the phase space file that are within minus 30 to 30. So I can, for example, just select particles within a smaller region of the first phase space file. What's the minimum? Okay, zero. Maximum, I want 18. Okay, this is not the latch. If I want to, for example, ask only draw, get for me these particles with this particular latch. So since I'm gonna put no, and that's the phase space file. We're gonna put a graph, we're gonna test. Okay, max the number of particles to plot. Let's put, we have 30, 37,000, let's put a thousand, okay? And, and then we can blow it up. Okay, so when we execute this, of course, if you don't have, if you're on Windows, this is not going to open automatically. You will get a file, and from the file, you can open it with uh, XM Grace. So now, for example, I can see if, most of my particles are within minus five and five. That's my jaws opening, right? And uh, from here in the y direction, minus five and five. So uh, this part, I mean, the plot just shows you the particles. Uh, since I selected all, these are photons, electrons, everything. But the concentration of particles will definitely tell me, okay, my geometry is probably uh, correct. Okay, so that's another thing uh, we can we can uh, do. Now I happened that I actually I think I ran a simulation, uh, and so let's show you. Okay. So I ran a simulation with. Uh, this afternoon and uh, I have, you know, I think here 13. So I have probably around uh, eight, close to 90, close to 100 megs of, of uh, so because I run it in parallel processing, uh, you will get a face space file for each of the script jobs. And, and it does not add them automatically. You need to do this manually. So there is a command called add face space and then I put the face space name. This is the input and the output is also going to be the same name or I could call, call it something else, it doesn't matter. Then eight is basically, I have eight of these face space files. You start adding from, from the first one and, and it's the uh, uh, it's uh, uh, face space number one. Remember in the simulation, we can actually have up to three. So if we put, if we put three face space files at three different component modules, you will find one is going to be one, second one is going to be two and three. But so now uh, here I'm overwrite, okay? 
So now, now overall, I have 3 million particles in that phase space pipe. Okay. What else can we do with these phase space files? Well, we can, sorry, let's open the beam. Okay, let's close this. Okay, we want to, let's get the spectrum. Okay, so we're gonna select particles, all minus minus zero up to 80. Uh, sorry, these are 200 bins, zero up to 18 MeV. Latch, no R, latch. Okay, that's the file that I want. Test, influence type, estimate influence, graph type. Let's put it as point. So let's execute. Yeah, overwrite the plot. So now it's secu executing. And at the end, what do we get? It's the spectrum of, of particles. I think this is for photons. Uh, spectrum of photons, uh, and and you could use actually get that file and use it as an input. You need to format it in a certain way. Use it as an input for a those R Z calculation if you want, or you could use just the phase space file. Okay, so these are very powerful tools. Uh, what's this energy here? This is probably at, uh, this is around 0.511. So that's, I think, the, the annihilation photons. That's a peak there. So we get it. Okay. It's interesting to do this for the diagnostic uh, range to see the, uh, the K alpha lines and with filtration how this affects the spectrum and so on. Okay. So these are, uh, this is another thing interesting of interest uh, uh, you could do. There are other options. I don't know a lot of these, uh, you know, the angular distribution. Okay, so this is basically, uh, let's look at it. I have no idea. So zero, okay, minimum energy, number of angle bins, okay, 200 minimum. And let's put my, I think this is the directions of the particles, probably. So oh, this is uh, here 18, latch, test, and the plot. Can have it pin or solid angle, let's do this. Okay. Oh, yes, is this over right? Okay. So this is basically it's just plotting, it grabbed all the particles and looking at the angle, the directional angle of these particles. And as you can see, these particles are going in a forward direction. Most of them, they have very small uh, angles. So they're going in a forward direction. I, I, I rarely use um, uh, the BMDP, honestly. But uh, because I'm interested more in doses in factor, uh, but some people are interested to, to study, for example, what sort of spectrum coming out of a, a beam or from an X-ray tube. Uh, and beam actually facilitates uh, that. Uh, uh, so coming back to latching, so let's go and load the file again. So for example, if one is interested to know something about the jaws, uh, about, about the scattering those coming from the, doll, uh, the, from the jaws, what you can, uh, let's, let's go and set the latching. So here, the latching. So here it's set, for example, by interaction. So if the particle interacted, then it will be latched, okay? Or it could be by passage. If the particle is going through that region, then you can latch it. 
So here I've set it uh, per, per interaction. And then when we go, for example, to the jaws, there, we, this is the opening, this is inside. I'm not interested, it's, this is for what's inside in between the jaws and that is air, okay? Uh, that I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in what happens in the jaw itself. So for example, those, I don't need this, okay? But for example, if it interacted in the Y jaws, it, the 14th bit will be turned on. It will be one, converted from zero to one. And if it interacted in the X jaw, then the 15th bit will be turned on. The number of bits, I'm not sure. Probably there are 16. Uh, I'm not sure about the document about that, uh, but uh, but uh, there, there is a limit to the number of uh, of, of uh, latches. Let's look at here. Maybe it shows that the latch 32 bit. So probably there is okay used to track the particles history in the GUI. There are an opportunity. There is an opportunity to define mapping from geometrical regions to bits using the so associate with latch bit option. That's for example, it's possible that bit five corresponds to geometric region three, and more importantly, one bit. Say three can correspond to multiple geometrical regions, example, one, five, eight. Thus, although the jaws may consist of six different geometrical regions, they can all be associated with a single bit. That's possible. Each bit is designed as follows. Okay, bit one set to one, if a Brahmin Shalang or post Haitian event, okay. So there are, if we look at the, 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 the latches, we could see at the beginning, there were a few of those that already were turned on, one, one, zero, something like that. So these are, uh, so the first one, set one, set to one if a Brahmin of positive annihilation event occurs in the history, zero other ones. Not used for non-inherent latch. Okay, bit one to 23 used to record the region. So from uh, bit one to 23, we get these regions, 24, 28, so I think we have 23. 24, 28 stores the region number in which the secondary particle is created. Okay, so it, it becomes very fancy. Okay, you can read, and uh, but again, you see when you do this in a linear accelerator, you need to record which latch is associated with which region, similar to the dose. In the output, you will not get that information. This is something in the input file. Okay, are there questions or? Uh, if I define source, then what is the role of target cell? Could you speak up because I don't understand your question. Take the mic and, and, and tell me what you mean. Narish, you can talk. <clears throat> uh, hello, sir? Yes, hello. Yes, we, we hear you, go ahead. Hello. Actually, we are defined both, sir. Uh, target in slab, we are defined. One first slab is considered as a target, and we yes. defined the source of it. Yeah. Uh, uniformly distribute uh, source also. So, what is the role of what is the difference between the source and if I define the source, then what is the purpose of target, sir? And the source say, emitting uh, photons only. Okay. The, okay. How does the linear accelerator work? Actually, uh, with the electrons and target is the purpose of to produce the photons. Eh? So, so what's here, your source? So, what's your source? Uh, my source is for photon. It is target only, sir. No, your source is the electron. You have electrons are accelerated, and then it hits the target. Then you beat the photons, right? Uh, for electron beam, it is electrons, sir. For photons, yes. yeah. Uh, hold on, but 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 in a linear really accelerator, what is the source of particles? Accelerated. Electron, electron, sir. Okay, so that's it. That's it. If you're doing a cobalt source, if you're doing a cobalt source, then you will select a photon source. But in a linear accelerator, your source is always an electron. Now, if you want to convert that to photons, you will put a target. If you want to treat with electrons, you don't put a target. The incident particle is always electron. For What's that? Huh? For internal particles, yeah, always electron. For Even an X-ray tube, an X-ray tube, your source is an electron. You have an electron beam hitting the target. You get a photon out of that. This is the whole purpose, because you want to model a linear accelerator. Uh, 
हाँ ऐसे right so so you, 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 in incident incident particle column we want to select always electron only for linear accelerator is it sir if i want i'm doing beam yes main in sometimes you might select another thing you might select a phase space file that's where the guess we can come to that later but if you want to start with a photon beam okay uh, uh, or an electron beam in a real, real accelerator model then probably your source is going to be an electron i don't know if a, if another linear accelerator works with a different source maybe there is you can correct me but the linear that we use in integrity therapy the source is an electron and that electron is accelerated through the uh, acceleration wave gap okay so the the how, how, how to define what's that how to define the focal spot in target sir in slab or source number it's in the source yes. we define it already as okay okay, okay. Sir, thank you. Thank you. so so you look at the source you look at so here for example we do, it's a parallel beam from the front okay and this is how so we put a beam radius for it okay and this is the direction and here is the energy okay so so if for example your pgd is a, a bit higher then okay you come back and do another simulation but now you you, you reduce this energy of electrons uh, from uh, you could put 17 i remember i think in my phd mine was the 17 point and that does not I mean, guys, this does not mean that your linear accelerator actually the electrons are at this energy or that energy, because the our model is not 100% matching the design of your linear accelerator. You don't know what's the target uh, composition. Okay, you don't know how the flattening filter actually is unless you you, you take off you take it out from the linear accelerator. A lot of this information is actually. uh hidden from us okay so we try to guess we try to think okay maybe that maybe this and so on and so on uh and at the end what we look at what's the output and because we cannot measure the dimensions of the target the dimensions of the flat filter but we can measure the pdds we can measure the profiles and that will be our judgment on whether our model is acceptable or not okay so always put that uh in front of you you want a model that okay probably it's good i get a, it, it it can predict you know my my data that i've measured accurately or not <clears throat> okay ah okay sir and one more okay. question is uh, how to control the input sir example mu i want to deliver only uh, one mu or or how to control the beam does not work like that how how what's what, how many electrons do you get from one mu do you know uh, no sir i don't have any idea about that okay it's a, it's a, it's a lot of electrons you can never uh, simulate this uh, just for a, think about a single pulse just yes? the pulse is about 2 microseconds and you have uh, a milliamp uh, uh, point 0.1 uh, or maybe 1 bit just Yes, one to ten milliamps. So take one milliamp. Imagine, just calculate how many electrons are actually hitting the target within that that period. That you can never simulate. You just you know take. So it doesn't work this way. What you can do, this is another way. To, this is the trick about it. That's why some people they record the dose in the monitoring chamber, because the MU is defined as centigrade per dose the monitoring chamber. so when they do the simulation they would record actually those to monitoring chamber and they take that as something that represents a monitor unit or something like this but don't think with beam okay i'm going to actually give more particles to get a higher dose it, no because everything is is normalized to per particle okay 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 one thing i wanted to uh, because in the linear accelerator in the simulation of linear accelerator i think this is something very very important okay otherwise you're going to waste your time a lot this is this is something called bramish rank splitting okay now bramish rank remember our our source is an electron and the bramish rank event is something that 
could happen maybe, let's say 10% of the time, okay? So your computer is doing calculations. 90% of the time, this calculation is irrelevant. It does not come up with any useful data for you. It just tracks the electron, the electron stops. Tracks the electron, the electron stops on the target, okay? But in, in an event when an electron undergoes a Brahmachalang event, emits a photon, uh, you want to actually <laughs> take advantage of this. And this is what's called do uh, uh, promise line splitting. Let me show you something. I'm going to turn this off, so no promise line splitting. Okay, and let's run the simulation again. Okay, I'll probably reduce the number of particles. I'm going to put it a thousand. Okay, so a thousand. Okay, and let's run the simulation. Execute. Okay. By the way, if when you do this execution, you get these batches one, two, three, four. This number here tells you actually the number of particles at the phase space height. So, for example, we ran 100 electrons hitting the target, and we got suppose we got a brownish line, but that brownish line could actually come to the phase space file or could escape the geometry. It's possible. Okay. So after 100, we got only one. Then the second 100, still none actually got received. Then third, 300, we got another one. So two now. After 100 simulations, 100, uh, after 1,000 a, a simulations, is it 1,000 or 100? I forgot what that is. 1,000, we got only six photons. Okay? So this is very inefficient. And a lot of calculation was done, but, uh, uh, but uh, uh, see, even if we try to, to, to increase this 10,000, let's put this. So. Okay, so after a thousand, 10,000, I got 81 particles. But imagine in the five, the, the, the simulation I did, before this one, I got 37,000 37, particles. And how did we receive that? How did we get that? This is, by the way, let's, let's just open also the DDP because then, uh, start one, okay, this happened, let's read it all. Okay. And this will be the accelerator, okay, that's the file. Okay. So here we have 81 particles, okay? Eight of them are photons, but look at this. This is the weight of the particle. The statistical weight of a particle is one, okay? We did not do what we call uh, variance reduction techniques. Or, so one of the ways to do a variance reduction technique to get useful information okay, is when we edit, we use Brahmish language. Basically what it means, it means that when you get a Brahmish language event, okay, if I have one Brahmish language event, then multiply that event. I want it to be split. So, so make, for example, 100 times. So I have one Brahmish language event, but I get 100 Brahmish language photos, and they will be sampled you know, in a uniform uh, distribution, angle-wise. But to keep everything with uh, statistically correct, then I have to give the statistical weight of each of these particles by one of the number of states. So if I run this simulation now, okay. Let's save it. Okay. Now I'm gonna get more actually, I'm going to get more particles in the phase space file. See, it's taking, because one in history, we're getting more Brahmachana, we're getting a hundred. So after, after a thousand, we got uh, uh, 726 particles.
so after 10,000, uh, num oh, this is 1,000, number of cases, okay. So uh, per 100, I got 700 particles. This, of course, does not make sense. How can you get 700 particles out of 100? It's because we're using Bramish Lang switching. So we're getting a Bramish Lang event, we're multiplying that Bramish Lang event by 100. But the, the, the particles that are generated, we're going to reduce their statistical weight. Energy column. What do you want me to explain in energy column? Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, actually, I have a doubt in uh, this uh, E cut and P cut and the energy column. So, how is the energy is getting it's, reduced? It's, it's, it's the total energy of a particle. Ah, yes, sir. So, we are selected E cut uh, like a point five five eleven. And uh, e -cut, e -cut, e cut has nothing to do with what you're talking about. So after that energy, it doesn't involve in those. Those, is it, sir? What's that? Energy. Okay, let's open this phase space file and let's see what's okay. <coughs> this parameters. Okay. Uh, okay. Execute. Okay. So these are the energies. So now we have 7,000, okay? Nice. So this is the energy, so this is the to total, total energy of the particle. It is energy of the photon. Of the particle, because you can have electrons. Okay, this particle, now this is a photon because this is the charge of the particle. Do we get electrons here somewhere? Okay, we did not receive, okay. Yeah, this is now a positron. You see, this one is a positron. Minus one, and that's its, its total energy. I think this is the total energy, not the kinetic energy. Okay, okay. okay. and look at this. Look at this. Do you see this? These two latches turned on. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is belongs to this positron. Uh, yeah. So that is. So this particle probably it was generated in uh, I don't know where, but based on one one of these latches. Okay. So example, if it is region wise, we want to select, we want to see the re, uh, energy means how to see that, sir. First region, to see second what? region. To see region what? wise, I the want energy? to see the uh, energy, yes, sir. The First region, region second energy. region. So what is mean 4.5 to MeV of where, sir? It's in first region or it is in X, X 3.876, is it, sir? What, what are you talking about? I still don't understand the question. No, actually, my doubt is uh, uh, we are selected E cut now, sir, 0.511. So that's e mean cut what, sir? Has not, e, e cut has nothing to do with this. Oh. So E cut is. Please explain the E cut, sir. It's, it's, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Oh, oh, oh. So just put zero for E cut. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. E cut has the E cut basically we're telling the simulation to stop tracking the particle if its energy becomes below that E cut. So for example, if my E cut is one MeV, then the simulation will track the particle, the electron, because E cut is for electrons or positrons, it will track the electron positron until the energy of this electron is less than one MeV, then it will stop tracking it and whatever energy, kinetic energy, it will be deposited in the region. So that is E cut. P cut okay. is for photons. So when I say P cut, put it at, uh, for example, one MeV, then you will so never- So can example, I continue? If you, can, can, I continue? You... can I continue my answer? Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay. P cut, if it's one MeV, then it will track a photon, okay? Every, any photon that has an energy below one MeV, it will not be tracked and its energy will be deposited locally. So sometimes people like to do this just uh, uh, because they, they see, for example, in a certain region, there is nothing really of interest to, to go uh, to track. Tracking particles to lower energy, that means more CPU time. 
So some people, they use these factors to, to just increase the, the, or reduce the time of simulation. The point that you have to be careful about is, is that going to affect your results or not? That's why I told you, you just put it zero. Don't worry about it. Okay? Okay, so okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, now, since we put a Bramish transmitting of, of, uh, of 100, look at now the weight of the particles. You see, it's one over 100. Because at the end, we want everything to be uh, like the doses and so on to be related to how to the dose or to the uh, incident particles. And that's why when, when this particle, for example, the positive dose, the dose is going to be weighted by whatever the statistical weight of that particle. Okay, so what people usually do for 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 uh, beam simulation again, this is ten, uh, uh, this is seven thousand uh, uh, seven thousand. So the way I would actually okay, let's run it again. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> what I want is to get to collect a lot of particles in the phase space file. That's my interest. So uh, uh, the way I, I, I uh, plan for my simulation is, for example, suppose I, uh, this is now, uh, I think this is a 1,000, and I'm getting 7,000 particles. Okay, what I want to see now is the time actually required, the time for the simulation. So now it took actually 78 seconds to, pr to produce 7,000 particles. Now, if I want 40 million, so this is, uh, I think uh, this is 4 million, 40 million, and I'm going to divide this by 7,000, okay? And multiply this by uh, 78. Is my calculation correct so far? So this is the number of seconds divided by, so I will need 123 hours. Now I happen to have an eight core machine, then I would say divide by eight. So I can get 40, part 40 million particles roughly, okay, in 15 hours in my machine. That's why pattern processing especially for B, this is, I think, something otherwise, it's going to take 123 hours. Okay, so 123 divided by 24, uh, that's five days. You don't need to go for, four, uh, for 40 million. Don't, I mean, if, if you have limited resources, so go for, for example, 3 million, 5 million particles. So in this case, uh, you, you would say, okay, I want, let's say uh, 10 million is going to be one four, uh, so 1.23 divided by 24, that's, that's five days. So for example, in one day, you can get roughly around 8 million. So in half a day, you can get uh, 3 million, I think. Okay, because my interest is, is the number of particles in the phase space file. Okay, now if you're looking for a dose, that's a different story. So now, we can go and look at uh, the plot data file. Oh, probably I don't have anything in school. Uh, I thought I have something here, okay. Yes. 
list. Okay. So in the list file, target region, okay, is there something where we have the those regions? It is here. Yeah, these are the There should be a, uh, something in the output, free space file output. Okay, scoring claim. Yes, so this is what total dose per instant particle. This is where those, those zones, okay? So you see, this is there in the, in the, at the end of the list file. Okay, we, there is probably, we have a zone one, okay? Uh, we have another zone five, we have a zone 12, we have a zone 30. And these are the doses with their, uh, 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 I think this is the dose here, the dose uh, with their statistical uncertainties. Okay, so uh, that's, that's how you, you get uh, the dose in, in the regions. I'm wondering what's, the, what's this? Oh, this is the mass of the region. Okay, the mass of the region, and this is the energy deposit. So at the end of the list file, you will get actually, uh, uh, you know, a list of the doses and uh, their. I think five was uh, where we have selected our chamber, so that's for, that's it. Okay, any other questions? So Narish, I hope I answered your question. Okay, P cut, P cut, just put them zero. Okay, you are not uh, experts yet in the simulations. So let whatever the what happens is it will grab everything from the fixed data file. Remember when we generated the fixed data file, we have used an AE and a, uh, an AP. So it will always grab those data files unless you want to override them. Uh, then you have to put in the input file. Why is the uncertainty at five lower? Where? In, uh, in the, those five? Well, you have to go and look at the region. Maybe it's a large region. In those five. Yeah, so, so maybe it's, it's a large region, okay? Because you have a larger volume, then you get, uh, statistics are, are, uh, are uh, we, you'll quickly actually get get a, a lower uncertainty there. But my suggestion is, I mean, we ran here a, a, a small, well, it's about seven thousand, I think. But try to, you know, you know, get uh, run uh, more parts uh, when you do this. So if you're doing launching this from the command line, if you have Excel, if you have a Linux machine, what you do is you would go uh, go to your terminal and you go to the directory. Uh, so that will be bean, for example, and in our case, it's the Linux ex file. Okay, then I will issue the command exb, not ex, exb, and I will type bean Linux ex, that is the code, and then the input file, which is 18, in my case, it's 18, then the PEX data file, I think it's uh, Linux, that's what I've used. And then you put P equals to eight or four, or try to use the number of, uh, there is no point of, of actually using more than the cores that you have. Because what will happen is then each job will be running at, let's say at a lower uh, percent. Uh, it's not gonna take the full CPU. So for example, if I put 16 here, I have eight cores. Uh, but probably I need to increase the number of particles. Emax. Okay, so I have 10,000. So let's put a zero here. And let's do this again. Emax P equals to 16, for example. So do Dr. Omid, we lost you. The sound is, is yeah. gone.
Sorry guys for this interruption, just uh, bear with, uh, with us a few minutes. Uh, Dr. Ramid will look in again, okay? Just a few minutes, please. Bilal, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I hear you. We'll list you for a few, okay, few seconds. Okay. Yeah, I got disconnected. My net got disconnected. Okay. 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 So, so uh, the point is uh, when you use uh, parent processing, uh, try to do it from, from the shell. Uh, I noticed that from the dose XYZ, parent processing does not work from the GUI. So if you go to the shell, it will should work. The only, for Beam, what you need to do is after the simulation finishes, is you need to add the face space files. And the command is you will be in that the same directory and you will type add, there should be a command, add phpsp, and then you will type in the input file. So it's 18 in this case, you don't need extensions. This is the input file. What's the output file you want? I can call it whatever I want, but I like to keep it the same name, no problem. And uh, then you will, uh, uh, eight is, is uh, or in this case, when this finishes, I should actually type 16. So it has the full all 16. And then one is you start from the first one because you could, for example, want to add only six, seven, eight. It's up to you if you want to do that, okay? But this means you start from one, and then, and then one is the number of phase space file. Is it the first one, second? Because you have up to three. If you are confused, just type add phase space file, and then it will tell you the usage. You see, add this is the input file, no extension, output file, no extension. Uh, this is the I, this is the, the parallel, the Ws. Don't worry about this. Uh, uh, sorry, this is yes. The I part is the number of parallel run, uh, runs of the. In this, our case, it was eight or it will be 16. I start the starting index of the parallel runs, default to be one. Uh, I score is the scoring plane number one, two, three, four. IA is set to one if files are in IA format, defaults to zero. Okay, so you could, for example, just type A and the rest will be used by the default file. I type eight, one, one. Let's start. Okay. okay. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding the output file. You have zero for photons and one for electrons and minus one for positron. Can you yes. make like grouping uh, from the output file once you get it? Just to yeah, what you say that. Okay. You can, for, for example, hmm. let's uh, just that I want a file. Okay, we have to wait till this finishes yeah. uh, because, uh, but, but let me show you, okay? So for example, we want to list them. Let's listing the parameters, okay? The particle type, I can immediately select, look, I want only electrons, mm -hmm. okay? And I will select the phase space file, which was here, okay? So execute, okay? So all of these particles now are electrons. Actually, electrons minus only. one is an electron. I got it, I confused. Minus one is an electron. Yeah, uh, minus one is electron, okay. Yeah. So, you see, it just listed to, for me the electrons. That reach that uh, level. It reach that level, okay? okay. You, can also, you can also get the spectrum. Suppose you want the spectrum. Suppose we're interested in this. I don't know why, but suppose we're interested in that. So I select electrons. I can put minus 30. Uh, doesn't matter. This, this is basically the area. I'm defining the area from which to analyze the phase space file. So I know my face face, I think it was 40 by 40 or 30 by 40, 30, I forgot, uh, I forgot. Anyway, so I just put something really big, okay? The number of e equal energy bins in the face face file, what it will do, it will, for example,
I think we lost the Tolomid again. Sorry, we have a technical issue. Just a few seconds, please. Okay, he's connecting now, just a minute. So how do you everyone? I have something in my net today. It's just disconnecting me. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we hear you. Okay, so this is now the, the uh, did, did, did you see the flow, the flows for the electrons? Or uh, uh, it was, uh, I mean- uh, No, you, you are disconnected. This, okay, this is for the photons. Of course, it's noisy because we don't have a lot of particles there. Okay, but for electrons, it's even worse. So let's go and select electrons and execute. Okay. okay, so this is now your wow. Okay, uh, because we don't have a lot of particles. Yes, yes. Good. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you, you could, I mean, it, it's a very powerful tool. I haven't used it and I did not need to use it. Okay, but it's very powerful. We could, for example, go and look at the latches okay so now we can include or exclude okay 
So you see the latches, that's why you have to know mm. the latches, which latch corresponds to which. You have to write this down. Otherwise, this is so for example, just, yeah. yeah. So here include, for example, I want I want everything to be, I think we had a latch 13. Okay. So for example, if I disable all of this off, I forgot which latches we used, either 13, 14, 14, 15. The one with the electron, it was, I think, 11. For the jaws, remember? For the jaws. Uh, the jaws. No, I, didn't you said, I think it was, okay, I'm going to just put all three. It doesn't matter. So now let's execute. I, I want the photos. So look at the photos. Okay. So you see, we did not get anything actually from the jaws, photons wise, yeah. or nothing interacted there. Okay, so I'm getting just nothing. Hmm. Okay, but if you run simulation, if you run simulations for a long time, then you will start to get information about about these uh, components. Okay, I forgot in the input file what did we do. That's why that's why it's very important when you want to use this latching and doses. You have to Note it down. Record, yes. write it down. Otherwise, let's look at the jaws. Okay, 14, 15. This is what, what so we did not get anything from actually 14, 15. Photon wise, we did not get we got electrons, but not photons. But we don't have a lot of uh, particles in the phase space file. Begin. Uh, there's a question from Jader. If you want to use variance reduction like symmetry to store particles at space, uh, phase space file, uh, is there an option? Can you speak up? So we have a yes, Jader, please. Can you speak it out? Okay, he doesn't, yeah. I unmute him, but uh, he, he's not uh, responding. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, maybe if, if, if we want to use uh, a technique to store particles in, in different parts in the, in, the, in the files, maybe I, if I want to store the space phase uh, in the 65 centimeters. Uh, if you want to store the same particular using using uh, criteria like symmetry. Oh, you uh, mean you? Oh, I see. I, I, but then why would you want to store it? Okay, you actually take advantage of this when you run the dose calculation, for example. So when you run the dose calculation, uh, dose calculation. Uh, uh, when you run, it, I mean, suppose you have a forty million particle phase space file. But usually to get good statistics, you would need 1 billion. So what will happen if after it uses all the 40 million particles in, in, uh, in your uh, phase space file? So there are techniques that, okay, now we have to reuse the particles, but probably suppose the particle was at one and five centimeter. So now it will, okay, put it, because you can tell it it's a symmetrical. Some, you have to be careful because sometimes it's, you don't want this symmetry. If you have a wedge field, for example, you don't want that. But if you have an open field, then you will tell it, okay, use the symmetry uh, and, and take that particle to put at minus one, minus five, or even at, at one and minus five and so on. That makes sense. You do it in the dose calculation part. But in the beam, you probably, that is not a good idea. Imagine if you have a wedge actually component in, in your, your beam model. And then you will tell the system, okay, just duplicate my particles, make symmetry in all four quadrants. Then you will lose this wedge, right? Right, okay. Okay, but you can do that if uh, you will, you can have that option in, in, in uh, the those uh, uh, calculation part, if you want, I think you can do that. Okay. Okay, Other, because then you're just storing a lot of particles in a file that it's duplicated information. Uh, 
Okay, any other questions? So you can play around. I can show you, uh, actually they do have uh, uh, example Linux. So let's go through one, one of them, okay? So let's open again, Lean. I sent you an example, but they do have an, uh, two other examples. One is for Photon, 10 MeV, uh, 10 MV Photon Beam, and the other one is uh, for Electron Beam. So let's look at the Electron Beam. So we'll go and load the previous accelerator. If you have this, if you're opening your computer, you can follow, do this, right? okay? So you, you load, and you'll find this EX example, this 16, MV photon, we want the electron, the 10 MeV electron. So I'm going to select that. And for the electrons, uh, we will go to the hen house because it's, uh, I think it's the 5 to 1. The photons, it uses the 700 ICRU. The electrons use the 5 to 1 ICRU file. So that's in the hen house. Okay. Then uh, the next thing you need to do is probably you need to compile. I think mine is compiled already. So I could say everything is up to date. Okay, that's a bit. Okay, let's done it again. I'm still online or got disconnected again? No, you are online, you can see. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, compilation failed. Why failed? Compile. Oh, successful. Okay. Okay. So then, in the directory, uh, there is going to be a, uh, I think, an example, uh, EGS input file. So if you open that, then let's look, look at the component models for this linear accelerator. So we have Slabs, okay, this is an exit window. Const 3R, collimator, const stack, that's a scattering foil. Chamber, and chamber, const stack, that's a ring. Mirror, jaws, and then we have an applicator. So we can look at the preview of the accelerator, and this is how it looks like, okay. So you see they have a nice chamber model, very nice, the mirror, is there, this is your jaw, okay? And then you have your, your uh, applicators are somewhere. This is your applicators. Okay, so uh, you look at the input file, edit, okay? Of course, here they turned off parameter transmitting. It does not make sense to do parameter transmitting for electron beam, okay? Uh, here, they're putting an E cut of 0.7. So what does this mean? It means that the particles are going to be followed in the simulation, electrons, until their total energy is less than uh, 0.7. Then they will not be followed. Their energy will be deposited in whatever region they have arrived at. For photons, so uh, that's what, uh, when you put this global, you can also go and set an E cut cut in it for different regions. In the jaws, you can set something higher if you want, okay? Uh, but you can never go lower than the, the AE that you have generated uh, when you generate your PEX data file. It does not make sense. It will always take the highest, either the E cut or the AE value. Now, the, uh, the source is an electron beam coming from the front. So here's electrons, and these are the cosines, the radius is 0.1. They're using a 12 MeV, although the beam is a 10 MeV electron, because as these electrons go through air, go through the different component, components, probably when they reach the, the, the phantom, they will have uh, lost uh, 2 MeV, probably, yeah, uh, this is what I think, okay? Uh, they have scoring planes, one, so here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So probably the scoring plane is after component module eight, okay? They have inheritance by, uh, by latch, so they have set a passage there, 50,000, that's fine, okay? And then you can go and, if you want, 
to see each individual. Uh, so the flattening filters, uh, flattening uh, uh, scattering foils. So we can open that as out of curiosity. Okay, this is how it looks like. So it, it's made out of, there is a small uh, disc on top of another one, on top of another one. And to do this model, you need this cone stack. You cannot do this with target, with the slabs. Slabs, all the three regions have the same uh, radius. But with cone stack, you can have these three disks with different uh, uh, radius. And that's how it looks like. Now they, they are, the, the, here they put a dose zone four, uh, latch four, okay. So they have done done a lot of, of uh, you can look at all of the rest if you want. Let's run it. Okay. Okay, so it was okay. How many particles did we get? We get 8,000 and we are, I think, uh, 5,000, we got 8,000. So, 50,000, okay, number 50,000, 50, okay, 50,000, we got 8,000. Okay, now, let's go and open the BDP and let's look at, let's at the parameters. We look at all, okay, because I want to surprise you with something. And here is the 10, okay. Yeah. Well, let's execute. Okay. Look at this. So we have 8,000 particles in the phase space file. Almost 6,000 particles are photons. And this is an electron beam simulation. So these photons are all contaminating photons. They have low energies. You can go and look at the spectrum. So don't be fooled. For example, <laughs> you run the simulation. Oh, I have 10 million <laughs> particles. But most of these are just photons actually. 70% are photons, okay? And probably you want to actually to have the photons, uh, but their contribution to the dose is not going to be significant because all of their energies are going to be uh, a bit. So we can look at the spectrum, okay? But uh, uh, these are the, the, so just a list of the first 10,000, uh, I think 100 particles with the latches, with their weights, so statistical weight is one, okay? And uh, let's go and, uh, not the energy spectrum, we want the, uh, spectral distribution, okay? So all, we want to look at the photons, the spectrum of the photons, let's do minus 100. So don't ask me, okay, if I want to, this is basically deciding, I mean, in our case, I just want all the particles in the face space file, but if you want to select a, a specific region, you can either, either have it as a rectangular shape or you can have it like a disc if you want, or a ring, okay? So you can, you can do that. 200, and uh, this is 12, so we'll put 12. Okay, so none, we don't want latches. Okay, test, graph type, point graph, fluence type, estimate rate fluence, and let's execute. Okay, so this is the spectrum of the Ramesharan photons that are coming from the Lina when it's operated in a 10 MeV electron beam mode. And most of these photons are, uh, this is 2.5, so let's have an energy less than one MeV. Okay, we can go and look at the electrons. So the electrons, what is what are you expecting the, the, the distribution to look like? Anyone knows? So we want to look at the energy 
uh, distribution for electron beam, the spectrum. It will have a lot of noise. It, it will not be, uh, no, but will be shape, a... No, but the shape, my, my question is about the shape. How does the shape look like? Like a photon beam where you have the spectrum curve going mm. from zero up to up to the maximum or uh, or something else. Because I, I would suspect, I would suspect we have probably Minus. The, uh, no to have the same, probably the same, it, it will be like a bell shape. Mm. So we'll have uh, a lot of, because the electrons, they will reach, a lot of them will come with about 10 MeV. We don't have like a spectrum going up down to zero. This is what I suspect. But the way to to, to see is you, you can go and let's try the here for the electrons. Okay, let's try again. Okay. So you see, this is what I'm saying is that most of them actually come with uh, the energy. The energy uh, they would reach the, the surface of the phantom with let's say 10 MeV or 11 MeV. It looks okay. like a black peak. <laughs> it, it looks it's, uh, but that is a dose. <laughs> yes, but 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 this is this is a spectrum of electrons. Okay, this is you know, so. For example, when we were doing a 9 MeV uh, calculation, those XYZ calculation, we have assumed that all the electrons coming, they will have a 9 MeV uh, energy. But probably a better thing is if we manage to model a 9 MeV linear accelerator, we will, we will probably get a spectrum of electrons, energy of the spectrons. And then we can use that spectrum to do the calculation in phantom. That is fast, it's, it's actually very fast when you do simulations from a phantom. When you do it from a beam, it's going to be, it's, it's a bit uh, uh, slow, okay? So uh, how much time? So we have 20 more minutes. I'm gonna show you now one last thing, okay? Or two, two things. So LS, uh, okay. those Now, if you go to your home area, to your dose X, Y, Z, there is going to be a folder called examples, okay? And these examples, there are two examples. Uh, actually, this is for photon beam. So you should actually do a photon beam uh, uh, simulation. So let's do this very quickly. Example, and then we have from the 16. Okay, the input file is there. Okay. Let's compile it. Uh, let's load the previous accelerator. Uh, this is the photons. Okay. That one, I think it's a hen house 700. No, no, I just want to compile. So, what I want to show you is the those XYZ file that I want to show you actually uses a phase space file as an input in, in, in uh, the calculation, in calculation. So we need to just generate the phase space file. Thank you. 
library. Okay. Make library, this is another source you could use. For example, there might be a limit to how big the phase space file, or probably just don't want to do any phase space file simulations. There is a way you can actually take the beam model with a certain input as a source for those XYZ calculation. And I'm going to show you both. But what you need to do is to compile the linear accelerator to be uh, like a library. So after you compile it, this you have to do from the terminal. So you will always type make library after it has been compiled with the make command. Then it will make it, uh, it, will make it available as a library. So let's go back to the dose X, Y, Z. Okay, and let's copy the one examples. Uh, which one is it? We're gonna copy both, 16. Okay. And let's open the dose X, Y, Z input file. Yeah, I forgot to actually run the simulation. And this test uh, okay, let's let's see my time. So this is those X, Y, Z, and let's open this file. That's an example. So the one here we have sixteen MV photon P H two O. So that's the phantom and P H S P. So it's a phase space. So the exact. So the, the source is a phase space file. I'm not sure which uh, uh, is seven hundred or seven hundred being Okay. So the source, the scene source type. We, we we did for example source zero. We did source uh, probably three. Okay, but now we can select full phase space source file. So when I select on this, then uh, uh, this is, so imagine your phantom X, Y, Z. So the top, this that's where the center is going to be. Uh, in a, because we're doing 100 SSD. So this is the center. This is the angle of your phase space file, the distance from source to center. Zero, so the, okay, if you look at, click on the help, I like this figure because I always get confused. When I open this figure, I understand. So this is the phase space file that we have collected. And this is our dose X, Y, Z. So the answer center is here at the, the surface of the file in the middle. So what I want, this is the answer center, that coordinate is going to be zero, zero, zero. So we want to put this here. That's the first step. Those are these three. Now, theta degrees are five. So the phase space file, there are two angles. One is theta. You see, it's it's this is the z positive z axis, and the phi is in this direction. So the phi is zero. I don't want rotation to this phase space file. I want it as is, but I want this the theta to be 180 because the phase space file, you see the part of the side that's coming, I want this to come to shoot downwards. So to do that, we need the theta to be at 180 degree. Now, the rest, collimator angle, if there is a collimator angle you want to do, uh, and distance from source to the center. Uh, so the source in this case is this, this is D source. So the phase space file is going, to, because we acquired that phase space file just above the fact. So it's going to be zero. People, for example, could acquire the phase space file, let's say, at 70 centimeters from the Linux source from the head. So then this distance is going to be 30 centimeters. That's the distance when you put it. Okay? So you can you can you can do this. And uh, like what uh, our friend asked, you see this redistribute, that's the option. So it will take the particles and just put them in the Four quadrants, or you can just disable. It. No, I don't want to do this. Okay, so it's it's up uh, you. Okay, now with latch filter or no latch filter. If, for example, you have actually scored 
uh, phase space files with latches, then uh, uh, it's me, Mona Vicky. I don't know what he's talking about. Okay. Uh, phase space file. So uh, if you have these filters, then you, you, you can actually, when you score the doses, it will score the dose with given filter. Again, you need that piece of paper that you have to make, you know, the latch, the latch seven corresponds to this latch. You need that otherwise. And here, of course, is just, uh, this is where you're going to actually uh, select uh, you know, the, the, the phase space file. Number of files to split electrons. I don't know what this means. It's, it has to do something with the, the various reduction techniques. I usually keep the default. So if, if that's what they think, if the guys from who wrote the code, they think this is the best number to put there, I won't argue with them. Okay. Okay. So here we have 1 million first time uniform, you're allowed, for example, to put a region outside of, of your meter. So for example, if our phase space file was scored at 70, and still we want to account for the medium between the phantom and the phase space file, because there is air going to be there. So that's fine. You can put actually here, uh, you know, air that would be a region outside. Okay, the physics again. Okay, they always, I don't know why they don't use the good physics. Okay, uh, this is fine. Yeah, that's just fine. These are really good, but not a big deal. So now when I run, let's say, so when I run the simulation, okay, so now it's taking the information from the phase space file. The photons, the electrons, and if the number of histories that I want to simulate is less than the number that's in the phase space file, it will reuse and, and that's one of the disadvantages of using phase space files. You need to have, because there is always going to be uh, an uncertainty associated with that. That can only be reduced by, by, by just increasing the number of particles in the phase space file. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, I mean, it's not necessary that you run more simulations of those XYZ histories that guarantees you're going to actually get a, a, a lower acceptability. Uh, because that's something, if you have a small number of particles in the phase space file, or you know, that, that's a problem. That's why they have this other option. I'm going to wait for the simulation to finish. Did I, by the way, put, did you put uh, output? And that's I think the tools are because I wanted to make sure that we have the phantom. Uh, it's uh, this one. We need this. We'll see. Because I want to show the dose X, Y, Z uh, show. So we can look at the distribution. And, uh, but once you have simulation is done, then probably you need to use that dose to get your profiles, PDDs, uh, profiles, and so on. While this is running, we can, let's open another one. Okay. And let's open this other one, the beam source. So now this is the advantage of using a beam source rather than a face space file. Is that you can, the more history you get, you will not be prevented by the uh, uncertainties in your face space file. Because in a beam source, whenever you need a history, it will go and model actually uh, with the reenact and get your particles. 
The disadvantage is that, of course, it's going to take time to just get a partial complete image. There are many people who say, look, now from a face based file, when I read from a face based file, that this time the application opens the file, reads the particle, and then do the simulation. This time to open and read from, from the file, from this, especially if you have a, a magnetic disk. Uh, it could be comparable to actually the time required to, to, to model uh, to, you know, a, a history through a linear accelerator. So they would say, look, I want, but if you have an SSD, uh, uh, you know, solid state uh, SSD disk, then probably reading from that file is going to be, is going to be uh, very fast. So uh, we're going to, again, Look at the 700. Okay. And you see, nine is, is the beam treatment head simulation. Okay. So, there, let's go and open this. So, the source, if you hit on, on, on this, it will show you actually the Linux that you have compiled as library. So, I have compiled this as a library. This is the photon one, is a library. The rest, they are uh, uh, like we have the, the electron is not there. But if I have to, uh, uh, compiled it, I went now to the direct and, and type make library, it would appear. Okay, so we're going to select, of course, this is the, the Linux that you want. Okay, now for that, what's the input file for the beam simulation? So I'm going to use this because you could have two or three input files one is a 10 by 10 field, one is a 20 by 10 field. What is the set of my or whatever, you know, different input files, you can save them. Okay, then you're going to select from here what's the face space file, uh, the input file associated with the beam. And what's the text data file also associated with the beam simulation. Okay, here is just the same thing, zero, zero, zero. That's the source. Everything on top here is similar to the face space uh, file. You see, it's very, very uh, simple. Okay, uh, let's see if that finished. Okay, it's almost there. So we are uh, here, we're doing 1 million simulation, 1 million particles. I could have run this uh, in parallel processing, uh, but uh, that's fine. Okay, so now with this simulation, 250 seconds approximately to, to simulate from the phase space file. Uh, 100, uh, 1 million particles, okay? So we have here a piston head simulation. Let's look at the physics, or the physics is, we don't select the good thing, okay? Fine. So let's save the input file and let's run this. Okay, so now it's not simulating, it's not reading from a phase space file. It is actually reading uh, from, it's it's uh, it's simulating actually through the beam. Okay, no face face file. I think this is uh, hundred thousand. The other one was was one million. Um, so definitely, this is going to take uh, a bit of more time. But my this is uh, uh, or to to do to do the analysis correctly because it took us some time to actually do the simulation for beam. So if you want to do a comparison. Okay, there is a beam simulation, and then there is a, a uh, those XYZ simulation. But the nice thing about this is it does not need to redistribute the particles. Uh, so that's really a nice feature about having a, a sort of a linear sort. So I'm gonna stop here today. It's a lot, maybe a lot of things to do, but uh, I hope that you know I covered the essential things to get you going. Um, what I would suggest, 
we're interested maybe next week, we should divide ourselves into groups. Uh, where a group will start to work on, on uh, let's say, a B model, and the components. And I would be jumping from group to group just to help you because you, you run something and it does not work, complain. You can look into this. Uh, if you if you know this very well, then I would really appreciate your presence. For example, next week, then you can actually be part of in one of these rooms where you can guide the others on how to do this and so on. Okay. Go back to you, Bilal. Yeah, this is perfect. So I uh, will have two groups, one for the B model and the other one for? Well, whatever. I mean, if, uh, what I suggest is people mm. should actually express their interest. For example, mm. if a group, they will say, look, uh, we want to model, let's say, a, uh, uh, let's say a 21 EX, but, but they should have, for example- The uh, input file, the big score. Uh, not just the fixed score, but they should also have the geometry. That they geometry, want to model. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. They want to do an electron beam, for example. Uh, a group wants to do an X-ray tube, which is fine. A group wants to do a cobalt beam, fine. So then we should, because you need to work, you need to generate your own models, really to 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 start to get uh, to you know. I'm not going to say to master this, but at least to get the hand of it. Uh, if there is a group wants to just focus on those X, Y, Z, that's a way back. But we could do that. Too. Uh, what I would also show you next time, uh, one thing that we're interested in probably is to, uh, to actually use a phase space file as an input for a beam simulation. Because for a uh, varying machine, the two beams, they don't give you the geometry of whatever components they have above uh, uh, the jaws. So the window, the, you know, the, coordinators, the targets, and so on. That is not going to use it. But they give you a face face file. They said, we have done the job. This is the face face file. So now it's up to us. We can take this face face file that's generated above the jaws and make a beam model. But in the beam model, the component models we're going to use is probably the jaws, probably the MLC. We don't need to actually do the rest. We don't need the target component model. We don't need. Uh, so you have everything uh, done up to the jaws. So from the jaws and down, you can continue your job. Yes. So I think we have to look into what they offer, and I think okay. they have some schematics. Mm. Then we can look into into that and start to actually uh, build our our beam and get a, a PDD and see how that matches uh, probably the golden beam because uh, that's probably what they have based their face face file. The, the disadvantage is they don't give the user uh, the privilege to tweak the beam. For example, I want to match it with my PDD. I cannot do that when I have a face face file. How can I change the energy of the electrons incident on the target? I can. Yes. Okay, so, but there is also another paper. Another paper, uh, there are others who actually uh, made the beam accelerator called fake beam. Okay. So it's just a model. And what they were interested in is actually the triple F beams because uh, uh, the, the, that, that was really the important thing. So basically they have used a 21 EX, yes, this was understood from their uh, paper. And then they tried to, okay, let's change a little bit. Let's guess, let's guess how the, 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 the flattening filter for a triple F beam, it should like be like a slab or something like this. It's, it's not like a cone shape. Um, and they made it and they varied this with different thicknesses, different materials, until they got a match with their PDDs. Okay, so maybe that also is something uh, a group is interested. We can do that. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so you see 200, but these are, but these are 100,000, okay? Uh, now, just the simulation finished, we have 200 seconds. That was 230, 250 seconds. But that was for a million particles. Mm -hmm. So 25 seconds, <laughs> see, it's almost 10 times, but uh, because, we... anyway. Okay, so I hope, uh, and if you have questions, 
please try to put it on in the classroom. Yeah, you know, just there's a question, Dr. Omid, here yeah, from yeah. Jadir. How can we use the stored space, uh, face space file calculated in Beam to doses calculation for phantoms? Well, we have just done it now. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, let's look at this. Those X, those X, Y. This is what I was demonstrating with using that as a source and show uh, the file where it was called the yeah. Oh, this is the beam. No, we need to go to the doors. Doors, X, Y, Z, show. I think. Yes. 16. Okay, Phantom. I think the face based example. Ah, let's get the doors. Okay, so this is the photon beam. Okay, that's the dose distribution in the fan for the code 16. MB. This is using a phase phase file. Of course, this is uh, it's noisy because the number of particles are limited in the phase phase file, and also the, the number of history that we have simulated is, is not a lot. And this is uh, the one for using the the Linux source, I think. Let's go. Uh, mean source. Okay. Oh, I did not put uh, Phantom, generated Phantom in the input file. But anyway, it is there. If you use, so you need to just generate the face space files. Uh, and then uh, you can use this example to automatically read uh, the file that was generated. Okay, I have more questions before we conclude. Let's select the appropriate source in the those exercise. You can also do the same thing with those RZ. So also you can select the face space file as a source. Okay. Okay. There's no more questions. So. Um, okay. Hey, okay. everything was okay. To your taste. Yeah, perfect. Actually, uh, I, I had I problems could... with angles, but I loved it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> but today I'm so quiet. I'm very quiet today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maybe I got so... younger. <laughs> Okay, then in that case, then uh, we'll see you then uh, next week. Inshallah. Thank Inshallah. you, Dr. Omid, okay. and thank and, you, and, everybody, and, for and, joining yeah. us. And, and please come up with projects. Come up with something. I want to do this. Okay. Some people, they send me questions that how, do, how uh, like, uh, could you explain something? Could, that doesn't work. Could you repeat those X, Y, Z? How do you do the fan? It doesn't work this way. You should come and, and bring your geometry jet and put it and then we will discuss how this is going to be done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay, then see you uh, next week, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Yeah. Good night.